Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 2nd, 2024. Let's get into it. So, you know, I always want to help you out in these videos in any way that I can uh, up front before we get into the news. And uh, so I, uh, it was actually the Silver Slayer. If you ever watch this channel on YouTube, I always like to promote other people. You know, it's it's not about me. This is all about you, okay? Anybody that watches my videos, you have to understand that I'm not into this to make money. I, in fact, I make no money off of these videos whatsoever. Uh, but I did, he was doing a uh, an AI uh, quote, and so I said, you know what, let's go up and ask Grok. Now, I'm, I'm a premium member on X, so I get access to Grok, which is an AI. And I... Uh, I, he was using a different AI, so I asked AI, I said, what would the gold price silver be in 2025? And I just wanted to read to you what, uh, what Grok said. <laughs> I just thought this was pretty cool. Market sentiment and expert opinions. There is a bullish sentiment around silver uh, with many analysts and investors on platforms like X, uh, formerly Twitter. <laughs> Imagine... Elon Musk's uh, X engine talking about formerly Twitter. Okay, anyway, it's kind of wild. Uh, suggesting that silver could see significant increases. Predictions range from silver reaching $37 to potentials as high as $50 per ounce in the near term, with some even more optimistic long term predictions. Uh, you think? <laughs> oh my god, it's used in panels. Uh, Russia's buying it. I mean, Holy shit, India, uh, well, well, we'll get into that later. Uh, silver's dual role is both an industrial metal used in electronics, solar panels, etc., and an investment commodity, bullion coins, ETFs, continues to support its value. Increased demand is techno in technology sectors alongside traditional investment demand could push prices higher. However, fluctuations in investment demand, as noted, with potential declines or shifts in investor interest, might temper this growth. <laughs> oh, my God. I, this is from an AI. If you're not investing in silver, man, I mean, I, I, what can I tell you? I told you what I just did. I mean, I, I gave a little bit. And by the way, I got, I, I, you know, I, I wanted to talk about taxes for just one second. So I got my tax bill because, you know, as you know, my mortgage is paid off. And, and I was looking at it and I thought, well, okay, good. They're, they're giving me till March to pay the tax bill. But then what I saw was it was a graduating uh, payment. So if you don't pay it in November, which is where we are, uh, it, it goes up in December by about 30 bucks, let's say. Then it goes up in January by 50 bucks. Then it goes up in February by 60 bucks. Now, where in the hell are you going to earn that kind of interest? So in other words, if you don't pay your taxes when they come due, you're screwed, man. So when you get your tax bill, don't ignore it. Pay it. I Obviously, I got to come up with the money. I'm going to have to withdraw some money out of my uh, retirement accounts and get that paid immediately. Uh, but I just wanted to give you that advice. Like I said, I always try to give you the financial or, or helpful advice before we get into the news. Uh, so anyway, the, um, the, the greatest story on the internet right now, and, uh, and I wanted to give some context to this, is Peanut the Squirrel. <laughs> Dead at Democrat hands. Democrats executed a squirrel and a raccoon. It's all over X. Now, if you're not following, uh, you know, if you're not on X and you don't understand social media, you wouldn't have known about this story. But I wanted to give my background on this because it, it really meant a lot to me, uh, which sounds really strange, doesn't it? Uh, back when I was a juvenile delinquent, I had a, a, a friend who we were driving around in a GTO running from the cops. You know, uh, we, we dusted them. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, we risk life and limb, probably of other people uh, unnecessarily. Uh, you know, when you're driving at 100 miles an hour down a 30 mile an hour zone, uh, and the cops are chasing you, you know, it's 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 not a good idea, and, and and it was a wrong thing to do, and I admit that. But I remember I, you know, here and now think about the guy that I wasn't driving the car, 
okay, because I wasn't that good a driver. But my my buddy Scott Honan, I'll call him out. I maybe he'll someday he'll watch one of these videos. His name was Scott Honan. He was the greatest driver. He could have been a NASCAR driver. I'm going to tell you what. He I mean he he could hit that emergency brake, flip that car on its side at 100 miles an hour, and shoot up a side road. It was incredible what this guy could do. And so I always felt safe. Uh, even though we're doing 100 miles an hour in the car. But anyway, um, so one one day I, there was a squirrel running across the road. And I don't know, I just, because I was a delinquent, you know. I gunned it and boom, boom, boom. Two tires hit the squirrel and I killed it. I'm going to tell you what, he reached across and started beating the crap out of me. He said, what the F is wrong with you, man? I said, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? He goes, he said, that was a squirrel you just ran over, man. What the what the hell's wrong with you? And I, I said, well, I don't know. I, I just felt like I needed to do it, you know. And uh, he he goes, he says, man, you are you are messed up. You're messed up. And and so I I actually would put me on a guilt trip, and I I felt awful about that squirrel. It was kind of like also when there was a bird up in a tree, and uh, I took a BB gun and I shot this bird out of a tree. And, and another friend of mine called me out on that. And they said, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Why would you kill a bird in a tree? You know, and of course, what was even worse was the bird was flapping around on the ground. And, you know, I felt so bad. I mean, but what are you going to do? I mean, I had to put it out of its misery. So I had to shoot it a couple more times with the BB gun. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, I can't even step on an ant. I can't step on a bug. I, I don't... I, I, if I catch a spider in my house, I throw it outside. I can't kill anything anymore. And, and, and that's why, you know, I'm, I've never been much of a hunter. Although I have been on hunting because I do feel it's okay to shoot deer and eat them. But, uh, you know, um, the guilt trips that my delinquent friends, I mean, these guys, you know, busted windows out of houses, you know, tore down mailboxes. I mean, <laughs> you know, I was a juvenile delinquent. But anyway, so let's watch the video of Peanut the Squirrel. We just learned that they have euthanized Peanut. And um, the raccoon as well. And the raccoon as well. Um, I, I, I am so sorry. I, I, this, is, this must be really difficult for you. It not only tears my family apart, but Peanut was the cornerstone of our nonprofit animal rescue. And 10 to 12 DEC officers raided my house as if I was a drug dealer. I was sat outside my house for five hours. I had to get a police escort to my bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to feed my rescue horses breakfast or lunch. I was sit sat there like a criminal. After they interrogated my wife to check out her immigration status, then proceeded to ask me if I had cameras in my house, then proceeded to go through every cabinet, nook and cranny of my house for a squirrel and a raccoon. They got a search warrant? They got a search warrant. Four departments and a judge signed off on a search warrant for a squirrel and a raccoon. And then they took them and killed them. Why did they go through all that to get a search warrant for an animal that had been with you very safely and the world witnessed this for seven years. Why now suddenly did they show up with a search warrant and, and take these animals? We haven't a clue. We don't know who made the, com uh, the, the complaints. Again, Peanut was an uh, indoor squirrel not harming anybody. He's been with us for seven years. Not a single complaint was ever filed for this animal. We had him for seven and a half years. He became the world's most famous squirrel. We weren't hiding him by any means. He was all over TikTok. He became the first squirrel on TikTok to ever hit a million followers. He did every news station around the world. He's helped people. He's helped kids gather joy. And then we started a nonprofit animal rescue called Peanuts Freedom Farm to help animals like Peanut fight a good fight when they're in a neglected case or they're sitting in a slaughter auction. And he was the cornerstone of our life and our organization. We used his platform to help raise money for the 300 animals we have at our sanctuary. Okay, so that was the video of Democrats uh, destroying this guy's life. Uh, and, and you know what? I mean, wouldn't it be cool to have a pet squirrel? I don't know. So we're going to get into the, uh, the next video because we got to get into the election. That's the most important part of these videos. And I found this, you know, and this is this is where Judge Napolitano is messing up. 
you know if you want to do anything for my videos you can do anything you want you've got creative common license I just want attribution okay and that's what I try to do to anybody else and so this is the liberal hive mind and I haven't seen anything on his channel that says I have to uh, do anything but give him attribution and, and by the way he's a, it's a great channel so I encourage you to watch it but this is a this is him on Democrats uh, actually uh, basically regurgitating their propaganda and saying hell no we're not gonna do it no more let's watch that video hey guys welcome to the liberal hive mind a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left okay so we've covered a whole lot of moments let's call them on this channel over the years but i have to say this might be the moment the greatest moment in mainstream media history we are reaching a boiling point folks it seems as though people have just had enough they're fed up of the lies the propaganda the disinfo and the frustration is starting to reach a peak people are saying you know what enough is enough enough of the lies enough of the propaganda and misinfo and that my friends is exactly what happened in this clip right over here we've got a top journalist at the washington post who straight up quits during a live stream as his colleagues essentially are acting as dnc surrogates let me tell you it doesn't get better than this folks let me show you guys exactly what happened and of course let's have a conversation we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right friends so let's first play the clip and then of course get into the details what the actual point of contention here is is it me or does it seem like this week donald trump is laying the groundwork for contesting the election by complaining that cheating was taking place in pennsylvania by suing bucks county for alleged irregularities and this is on top of his continual asser assertion that if he loses, it's because of cheating. Uh, yeah, that's what he's been laying the groundwork for this, just not in the last week, but in the last umpty ump months. No election can be fair unless Donald, in Donald Trump's mind, unless Donald Trump wins it. Uh, and I think we are going to see him both rev up his supporters to contest elections outside of courtrooms and go to every courtroom he can in America where it's relevant to make whatever um, arguments he can, no matter how far-fetched. We saw John, you know, that I, I got out last time, but it didn't work out I this time. You. It may not work, it may not, that may not happen this time. And now I'll let you go, Hugh. Well, I've just gotta say, we're news people, even though we're at the opinion section. It's gotta be reported. Bucks County was reversed by the court and instructed to open up extra days because they violated the law and told people to go home. So that lawsuit was brought by the Republican National Committee and it was successful. The Supreme Court ruled that Glenn Youngkin was successful. We are news people, even though we have opinions and we have to report the whole story if we bring up part of the story. So yes, he's upset about Bucks County, but he was right and he won in court. That's the story. I'll let you keep going, Jonathan. Um, no, I'm just, I don't appreciate being lectured about reporting when you, many times you come here saying lots of things that aren't I won't come back, fact. Jonathan. I'm but, done. But, I'm done. This is the most unfair election ad I have ever been a part of. You guys are working. That's fine. I'm done. So Ruth, you wrote a column this week uh, ending with this line. And actually, I think this is perfect. Um, we're going to put it on the screen. You wrote, you want to know the stakes of this election? Not only democracy, but decency. Talk more about that, Ruth. Okay, I'm collecting myself. Oh, Ruth froze. Ruth is frozen. So uh, hang in there, everyone. We're going to see if we can try to get Ruth back. Um, to this uh, very, we're gonna get we're gonna get Ruth back in a moment. Um, this is first look, uh, Washington Post Live's uh, nonstop shop for news, news and analysis, and Ruth is back. So I'm gonna read that quote back again from your column, Ruth, um, where you wrote, "You want to know the stakes of this election? Not only democracy, but decency." Ah, uh, we lost. We Okay, we lost her again. Uh, everybody, if you've been watching First Look, you know that these conversations can be uh, interesting, contentious. Um, you just saw um, Hugh Hewitt leave 
uh, the conversation, which is lamentable, unfortunate. Um, it is what it is. Now, firstly, before we get into anything else, we should probably react with a video meme here. This pretty much suffices and tells you exactly how I, I feel. I'm proud of you, you know that. I hope you do. I am so impressed with Hugh Hewitt. You know, I'm just gonna say it, might be a little bit crude, but it takes balls to do what this man did. And what it really feels like to me is we're really reaching a boiling point. People are just done with it all. It's so obvious what's going on. People are waking up. I mean, look at the last couple of weeks, this incessant, constant stream of lies and misrepresentations. All to whose benefit? Obviously to Kamala Harris's benefit and to the detriment of Donald Trump. It's obvious what's going on. It's obvious that these people are not journalists, but rather paid propagandists. They're chills. And who wants to work in an environment like that? At least who, in good faith, would want to be part of that? It's completely insane. I mean, let's get into the context a little bit so we can understand this man's frustration. Essentially, here's the story. There was a bunch of videos coming out of Bucks County in Pennsylvania. I have a question. Um, I have to bring someone here about four o'clock to vote. Are they going to ask you to talk to this? Are they going to turn everyone down? I'm going to ask you to talk to this gentleman because the voting is closed right now. It's closed. I just want you to talk to this gentleman. We have the right to vote until 430. I got you. Why is it closed? Let me explain it to you. Please. Okay. This process is very slow and grueling. That doesn't matter if we're online. Very slow and grueling. It doesn't right. matter if we're online by 430, we have the, the right to why vote. why it had to close was because a high volume of people wanted to do this, slow and grueling. Well, then they so have they to wait till everyone's... Out. They, they had that to cut it. the line at 145. They cut the line at 145. 145. You hear that, everyone? They cut the line at 145. See that, everyone? They cut the line, even though we have till 430. Essentially, there was a couple of videos suggesting that people were getting kicked out of the line, not because they arrived too late after 5 p.m., but being kicked out around 1.45 p.m., well before the deadline. And so the RNC decided to file suit. Now, I know that a lot of you today have seen these videos of people being turned away for at the polls in places like Delaware County and Bucks County. And last night, we even saw one of our great local leaders, Val Bianca Diello, arrested at the polls for telling people to stay in line. All she was doing was telling folks, stay and vote. They took her away in handcuffs. Folks, here's what's happening. Democrat election officials are seeing our numbers. They're seeing our turnout. They are seeing us breaking early vote records across Pennsylvania. They are terrified and they want to stop our momentum. We are not going to let them suppress our votes. We are going to fight. I'm proud tonight to tell you that the Trump Vance campaign has just filed a huge lawsuit against Bucks County for turning away our voters. And essentially, the suit alleged that voters who were in line by the 5 p.m. deadline to apply in person for mail-in ballots were improperly turned away, thereby violating their voter rights. And then in response to the lawsuit, Judge Jeffrey Trauger of the Bucks County Court of Common Pleas ruled that the Board of Elections had violated the state's election code. The judge then extended the deadline for voters to apply for and receive mail-in ballots until 5 p.m. on Friday, November 1st, 2024. And so that's pretty much the gist of it. But Jonathan Capehart and his fake news colleague decided rather than reporting on what actually happened, which was the Trump campaign and the RNC winning a lawsuit because people were being improperly turned away, they're going to drum up this narrative 
that Donald Trump is claiming that there's all kinds of cheating and he's trying to fight in court. To be honest, I don't even really know what they were getting into, but obviously they weren't reporting on the actual facts of what had happened in Bucks County. And Hugh Hewitt said, I'm not going to be a part of a DNC ad because that's essentially what it was, propagandizing the news, the current events of the day. And Hugh Hewitt's decision to stand up not just for himself, but for the integrity of journalism, in my view, highlights a rare moment of courage in an industry that is so infested with left-wing groupthink that it hardly feels surprising anymore. Every American should be enraged by the state of the media today. Journalists are not only showing open disdain for conservative perspectives, but are actively sabotaging honest reporting on critical stories, like this one unfolding in Bucks County, for instance. Hewitt's frustration isn't just about one misleading headline, it's about a system that has been irredeemably corrupted by a one-sided agenda. I mean, it's no secret. The overwhelming majority of journalists in the mainstream newsrooms are Democrats, and they often operate under a smug facade of neutrality. Ooh, CNN, the most trusted name in news. Yet instead of allowing open discourse or reporting on the actual facts with even an ounce of fairness, they're more likely to be found parroting the same recycled talking points. They're essentially campaigning for the DNC. Isn't it obvious? I mean, almost every major news outlet is endorsing Kamala Harris without hesitation. This is propaganda. There's a propaganda problem in the United States of America. The same message repeated across every screen, every paper, and every radio frequency, and when dissent arises, it's dismissed or misrepresented, or in Hewitt's case, mocked until the dissenter has had enough. It's getting to a point where people just can't take it anymore, and who can blame them? If you have even an ounce of intellectual integrity and honesty, it's impossible to watch the mainstream news. You turn it on and it's the most frustrating experience that you could possibly imagine. Trust me, I do it all the time. All right, so that was a great video. So then we get to uh, the the, um, uh, the best part here was uh, Joe Rogan on war and censorship. Bad speech is better than better speech. And big pharma. Oh my God, this is this is a hell of a video. And and it it, it just seems like Democrats are on the wrong side of everything it, that we know about. And so that's why I want you to vote for the Dream Team. You know, Elon Musk, Trump, Tulsi Gabbard. But let's watch Joe Rogan on that right now. If you look at what's going on with the liberals right now, so progressives are, they want the war in Ukraine to be funded. They want to censor speech online. And they want to give the World Health Organization, which is deeply influenced by big pharma, including the FDA, deeply influenced. The revolving door between the FDA and pharmaceutical drug companies is legendary. And they want to give them control over what we take and what we don't mm-hmm. take. And that's crazy. And that doesn't make sense because that's not what the liberals were when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. My parents were hippies. You know, we lived, we lived in San Francisco during the Vietnam War. My parents were like straight up hippies. That's how I was raised. And so for me, it was always like the liberals were the ones who wanted education and open-mindedness. The liberals who were the ones with the ACLU let the Nazis Mm. talk and let them have a rally. They said you can't infringe on people's free speech because if you infringe on the speech of people that you disagree with, you're being a fucking hypocrite. You got The only solution to bad speech is better speech. We've always known that. Mm-hmm. But when they had the power over social media and these collective groups of people that all had the same ideology, and then that tribal mentality kicks in and you lose the perspective that you should have as an educated, educated person that recognizes that everyone has to be able to talk and we have to figure out who's right. And you might be wrong. You might be wrong and you might be clinging to this idea that you're right and you're going to do the whole thing a terrible disservice. I think we should even stop calling it the left and the mm. right because it's just tribes. Mm. Mm-hmm. It really, that, and that, that is the real problem. When, when you have people that are supposedly progressive and liberal and they're opposed to the idea that free speech is an absolute right as an American citizen, it's very, very important. It's very important because yeah. it's because too many people can decide what you can and can't say. Like when Tim Walsh was saying, like free speech doesn't apply to hate speech and misinformation. Well, of course it does. First of all, of course it does. But also, you said misinformation. Okay, well, if that's the case, like where is all the punishment of all the people that spread misinformation during COVID? Mm. Like where's the call? Mm. Where where's the call for accountability? It's non-existent. It's not real. They don't really care about misinformation. They care about controlling information. 100%, man. Okay, 
So now, you know, I could have put this right after I talked about Silver and Brock, uh, but I found this video from SD Bullion. Uh, India is buying up gold like freaking crazy. And uh, and so SD Bullion put this video up, and, and, and I've told you in the past, I buy, well, all of my silver at this point from SD Bullion, uh, anything that I want delivered to the house. And uh, and so let's let's watch this because this is some incredible news of what's going on with gold. If you don't think precious metals are going to go sky high, <laughs> you're batshit crazy. Let's watch that. Saying, yeah, mate, we're going to need to take back that entire row of our bullion by air cargo. Cheers. So now India has 324 metric tons of reserves split between London and wherever the BIS also has it hidden. One of the story's top comments with the highest like to not like ratio was the following comment by a likely Indian citizen who read the news. He stated, quote, move all the gold back to India ASAP. It is never safe to keep any gold in another country. Bring all the gold back to India before the year end. England is never a safe place for India's assets. Palki Sharma of First Post does an excellent job explaining the historical background of this latest 102 Indian gold London withdrawal story. Have a listen. Yesterday was Dhanteras in India, a festival that comes right before Diwali. A lot of Indians like to buy gold on this day. It's seen as very auspicious. Just ask the RBI. Even they have jumped in on the Dhanteras craze. As you know, the RBI is India's central bank, the Reserve Bank of India. Yesterday, they revealed a key development. The RBI secretly shipped 102 tons of gold from London to India. 102 tons of gold. And this was not a purchase. This gold already belonged to the RBI. It was only stored in London. But imagine the logistics. Again, we're talking about 102 tons of metal, a bit like transporting 20 adult elephants over thousands of kilometers. So how did the RBI do it? Naturally, they have not revealed everything, but reports say special flights were chartered, security was stepped up, and once in India, all taxes and customs were waived. Overall, a successful mission. The RBI has vaults in Mumbai and Nagpur. Chances are the gold will be stored there. But why was this, this decision taken now? To answer that, we must go back to the 1990s when India was facing a financial crisis. It was running out of dollars to import goods. So the, the then government of India decided to pledge its gold. We're talking about multi-million dollar loans. You can't get them in your local gold market. You need global trade centers like New York or London. So the RBI sent tons of gold to the Bank of England. This gold was pledged there in exchange for a loan. Of course, the loans have long been repaid, but India's gold remained there, and logistically, it did make sense. The gold would be near the London bullion market, so if the need came, it could be easily accessed. Then why is it being brought back now? Well, because of two reasons. One, India's foreign reserves are very healthy now. They stand at $688 billion, enough to cover more than 11 months of imports, so the RBI is more confident. A repeat, a repeat of the 1990s looks virtually impossible now. Secondly, because of geopolitics. Yes, Britain is on good terms with India, but equations can always change. And if they do, a big chunk of our gold will, gold will be on British soil. What if they decide to freeze it? Or worse, sell it off? That's what the West is doing to Russia. When the Ukraine war started, Russia had around $600 billion in reserves. That's gold plus currencies plus assets. Nearly half of that was held abroad, mostly in Western countries, $300 billion. And what did the West do? They froze those $300 billion in assets, meaning Russia could not access its own wealth. Now, don't get me wrong. India and Britain are not going in that direction. But it's always better to have your assets at home, especially if your economy is robust. The RBI is thinking along the same lines. They have around 800 and 855 tons of gold in reserves. 855 tons. Around 510 tons of that is now held at home. So more than half is within India. A similar operation was done in the month of May this year as well. The RBI brought 100 tons of gold from London. And now another 102 tons. Should we expect more in the future? Reports say the government is open to such operations, but not this year. 
And it's not just about repatriating gold, it's also about stocking up. The RBI bought 32 tons of gold from April to September. Gold made up 8% of the reserves in the month of March. Now it makes up more than 9% of India's reserves. So clearly, the Reserve Bank is on a buying spree. The question is why? Because gold is a safe asset. It is not volatile. It is reasonably liquid. And it can diversify your reserves. You may have noticed that in recent times. When there is a war or natural disaster, gold prices remain stable. Or they increase, which is very different from currencies or oil, which can go either way. So it's a good backup for central banks. It's good for them to have more gold. In fact, central banks hold nearly 20% of all gold ever mined. We have a list. The US has around 8,000 tons of gold. Germany has more than 3,000 tons of gold. Italy has more than 2,400 and so does France. But guess who outranks all of them? Indian households. Ordinary Indians are sitting on 27,000 tons of gold. I'll repeat that, 27,000 tons of gold. Yes, it's clearly an obsession. But in those countries, gold makes up almost 70% of government reserves. Compare that to developing nations. In China, it's 5%. In India, as I said, it's 9%. So expect this landscape to keep evolving. Of course, that's a discussion for another day. Today, it's all about celebrating this reversal. From pledging gold abroad in the 1990s to proudly bringing it back home now. It's a story of India's economic resilience and rise. So further to our point about India, still only having just under 10% of her sovereign wealth and savings allocated to gold bullion officially, whereas often unaudited Western financial powers claim holding up to around 70% of their savings in physical gold bullion reserves. China and Russia also have more catching up to do well, they basically coordinated the timing and sizes of their tandem official gold bullion reserve declarations thus far in the 21st century, China still only has about 5% of her sovereign savings in gold bullion allocations declared. Russia, just under a prudent 30% physical gold allocation at the moment. Worldwide, the average gold bullion allocation is still a pathetic 12% among central banks. But as you can see, it's growing with the nominal spot price of gold climbing. The world central banks on net still hold way too many IOU bonds and foreign fiat currency issuances compared to their official gold bullion reserves. Obviously, the global bullion over bonds trade is only still now in its early innings. Both disclosed and undisclosed central banks and high net worth investors are increasingly moving in the correct direction. It's only in the later innings of this trade, retail normie investor hordes will finally figure out what's going on at much higher relative bullion valuations. After this short break, we're going to dig into silver news this week and see further how Indians are also flexing their muscles in that increasingly cutting-edge industrial and precious store value trade as well. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. All right, so that was uh, SD Bullion. But now we get back to the election. And uh, I got a couple of short clips here from Tulsi Gabbard. I tell you what, I mean, you got the dream team. RFK Jr. I was talking about, and you got Tulsi Gabbard. They are out on the campaign trail, and they're putting up everything they can to get the Republicans over the finish line. Uh, let's just watch Tulsi Gabbard saying Democrats like Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, uh, they, they want to send our troops to war. Now, if you haven't been following along, uh, there's all these stories about how Trump said that, you know, uh, well, actually, there was a case brought against him. I can't remember what state it was in. And uh, they said, well, you know, Trump wanted uh, Liz Cheney to die. No, he was just saying, you know, if you want to send our troops to war, why don't you go to war? And, and that's my question to every congressman in, in, or the political elite in the United States. You know, if you want to send our sons and daughters uh, to war, why don't you go over there with them and, and join in the fighting? Now, that, that's something I could respect. You know, if you're going to send everybody to war and you're going to go along with them and you're going to fight alongside, well, I guess in that case, I'd say, well, you know what? You got your... You're freaking balls in the game, don't you? You got your balls in the game. But you know what? These bastards sit up there on Capitol Hill, and they don't give a shit about your sons and daughters in the United States. And that's why all that Tulsi Gabbard was making out to tell you that these people don't care. 
about your sons and daughters and Liz Cheney is the worst of all and Dick Cheney was the worst because you know what? I was in Iraq. I was in Kuwait. Okay? Uh, Dick Cheney sent me to war for no freaking reason. There was no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Oh, no, let's watch that video. See and cowardice. You may have seen over the last few days that Mark Cuban claims that President Trump has no strong or intelligent women supporting him. The premise of Mark Cuban's statement is that he believes that Liz Cheney and other female warmongers like her are strong women. This is not the case. They are hypocrites and cowards. They are eager to send our troops into war, my brothers and sisters into harm's way, and yet they themselves refuse to volunteer to put their own lives on the line on these military adventures that they're advocating for. This is not strength. This is hypocrisy and cowardice. President Trump was absolutely right when he said that Dick and Liz Cheney are always eager to go and waste the precious lives of our brave men and women in uniform, sending them off to go fight in stupid military adventures. And yet they themselves are too cowardly to put themselves in a position where the enemy's guns are pointed at them with their lives at risk. So instead they sit and hide in their ivory towers uh, without hesitation, sending others into harm's way. So President Trump speaking this truth is not a threat to anyone. It's the truth that voters need to know before this election is over. Listen to Trump say it in his own words and make your mind up for yourself. But the reason she couldn't stand me is that she always wanted to go to war with people. I don't want to go to war. She wanted to go. She wanted to stay in Syria. I took him out. She wanted to stay in Iraq. I took him out. I mean, if it were up to her, we'd, we'd be in 50 different countries. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send, uh, send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have, I'd, I'd have meetings with a lot of people. And she always wanted to go to war with people. All right. So that was Tulsi Gabbard. And then we've got uh, a, a video on Mark Cuban uh, being a freaking idiot. Uh, let's just watch that one right now. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women. Ever. Yeah. It's just that simple. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women. Ever. Yeah. It's just that simple. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women. Ever. Yeah. It's just that simple. All right. As you all know at this point, Mark Cuban said that he's never seen strong, intelligent women around Donald Trump. Now I want to enter into uh, the evidence exhibit A. This is Mary Madison. Mary Madison is the um, she is the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, she is a huge supporter of Donald Trump. In fact, she's given about $95 million so far in this election cycle. Oh, look, all these pictures of her with Donald Trump. They seem to be hanging out, you know, pretty close. Uh, so Mark, who is a minority owner, 27% of the Dallas Mavericks, she let him stick around just so he could go to the games and look important. She's sort of your boss, dude. So strong, intelligent woman that supports Trump and is around Trump, and you literally just threw her under the bus. You are a dumb piece of shit, dude. Might want to rethink that one, Mark. Okay, so that was Mark Cuban. And then uh, this was uh, this was great. We're getting kind of to the end of the video here. This was, uh, I, I don't even know who this guy is. T-Pain? I guess he's a rapper. And uh, he came out. So I, I, I'm i thinking some black rappers are, are actually getting into the, uh, the, the political debate here. Maybe some black people are going to actually vote for Trump. I mean, I, I don't know why they keep voting for Democrats. The Democrats were the ones that enslaved them back during the Civil War, and they don't understand that. And then the Democrats co-opted them uh, as their voting block, which is ironic in a certain kind of way. But let's watch T-Pain uh, at this concert. Hello, America. Dr. Payne is finally here. Happy Ball! Happy Ball! Give it 
up for maybe the most wonderful DJ in the world, DJ Monty! He's substituting for Mike Pence tonight. <laughs> Folks, frankly, quite frankly and unfortunately, they couldn't let in the other 100,000 people that were trying to get in. I appreciate everyone that got to the front of the line. I heard it was pandemonium. You've never seen anything like it before. Now folks, tonight is a very special night. I celebrate it all the time, every year, same day. Tonight is Hallow's Ween. I've seen a lot of great costumes tonight, maybe not as bad as mine. Happy Ball! Happy Ball! Okay, so that was T-Pain. Uh, so then we'll finish up with the last little piece of news because I didn't want to just be all about the election. Uh, we got B-52 bombers, uh, the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, the freaking warmongering genocidal Democrats are sending over to uh, help uh, the Israelis uh, commit genocide in Gaza. Obviously, I have to finish with something like that because all Christians in the United States want all Arabs and Palestinians dead, you know. Got to finish with that, you know. But uh, anyway, so uh, this is the, the the clip on that. You'll see it up above uh, that they're, they're, we're sending as much hardware as we, uh, the Democrats are sending as much hardware as we can to, to uh, basically kill every Arab. Why in the hell? If you're a Muslim, are you going to vote Democrat? I, I, I would think that you might just want to rethink things. Peace out. Stay free. So we've sued there. We've sued uh, California. Settled the case. 1.2 million names removed. New York. Settled the case. 450,000 names removed. Pennsylvania. We sent them a warning. One county removed 69,000 names. Many more were, remo were removed as a part of a settlement. Kentucky. Kentucky. Excuse me. 500,000 names removed after a consent decree. North Carolina removed a bunch of names. In total, approximately 4 million names were cleaned up in the last year and a half, two years, as a result of Judicial Watch's litigation. And, but we're just not going to stop because Illinois, their roles are a mess. California, their roles, even though L.A. County removed 1.2 million names, the rest of the state is still a mess. So we've sued there.